Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. <coughs> Everybody's there, huh? I think so. Okay. So, you know, this first verse of Upadesha Amrita, it comes over quite strongly to someone who may be a newcomer or unfamiliar with Krishna consciousness. The, the level of uh, rule or standards which are required may be quite severe, quite shocking to people coming out of the material world. So much uh, regulation, oh you can't do this, you can't do that. So many problems. But as devotees, we don't usually think like that. Although people who are new to Krishna consciousness, they may have some feelings that, oh, controlling the senses, you can't. You have to control the speaking, you have to control the mind, you have to control the anger, you can't get angry. <laughs> Very difficult for, some, for a lot of people. Okay, so what, what we've got now, we've got some examples for you. We're going to ask you how you would react in these different situations. You said you have some groups, Krishna Keshava? Do. Yeah? So... Yeah, we... You have, how many groups do you have? There's four groups. The monthly users are together. Yeah. And then um, the problems are split into various different groups. If I just find the group list. Did you want me to split people up into groups? Yeah, if we could have some groups. Okay, okay. Well, would you like to tell them what, they, what you want them to talk about in their groups first? And well, then when you've done that, I will split them out into the groups. Okay, we, we have some different situations, real life situations. And we, I'll, okay. just, I'll just show you, and we want to know how you're going to react. Yeah, here's one. You're at a public function. And you're told the cheese is vegetarian. After the meal you find out that the cheese actually had animal rennet. How do you react? What's your attitude? What do you do? That's one situation. There's another one. Of course, we won't be able to do five minutes skip, but you can speak. You can speak something. You can prepare some they, kind. Huh? Can they do this? They could potentially, if they, if they if they could do a five minute skip, they could potentially come up with. If you give them some time, they could potentially come up with a script instead of a skip. Yeah. <laughs> That's a possibility. Yeah. They can, of course, they can speak it, yeah. They yeah, can. speak it, that's an idea. This is something we're particularly interested in. We want to hear some strategies for dealing with the most difficult challenges which we encounter. You know, a challenge may be like, you know, I have this really bad temper, I get very angry. You know, what, what, what will be the good strategy? Or oh, I have this problem, I eat too much all the time, I always eat at night and then I can't get up in the morning. What's your strategy for dealing with this? What's the strategy for talking? Some people have the habit, they talk a lot of things, they talk about others. You know, we, they're always talking, 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 they can't stop talking. How are you going to deal with it? What's your strategy? And here's some more questions. Hmm. 
we want, you know, I think if the groups could, could go through these things one at a time, right? Okay. Here's, here's the first issue. I, well, maybe we should do the, 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 this one first, you know, since it's a, okay. a skit, you know. But it, you're okay. just, just going to talk, you're not going to act anything. But okay. For control. So, Mark, would you like everybody to go through all of them, or do you want to assign a specific? Yeah, you well, two, if, if we. If, one task to group one and two, say for instance the skit, and group three and four can do a discussion about the cheese. Yeah. Well, well, well here's, then here's the group can have the Here's the four urges to speak, the mind's demands, actions of anger, and urges of the body. So if we have four groups, right? The marriages, yes. the marriages will give them the urge to speak. And the man can have the other three. Okay. Right? Have we got a leader for each group? Okay, I'm good. Shall I start splitting people out into groups then? Yeah, please. Okay. Who's the leader for the ladies? Um, I guess they'll choose one in the group in a minute. Because um, everybody gets a chance. Group one. Just give me two minutes, Maharaj, while I split people up. Are you going to assign um, the urges to specific groups? Yes. One one urge for each group. Right. The managers so will do the urge to speak. Oh, Or it may be the urge not to speak. <laughs> then the men, the men are going to take one of the other three. Urges of the body. Actions of anger. Minds to man. And we want to know specifically how, what is your strategy for dealing with it, right? We mentioned here, develop strategies for dealing with these, this, this particular challenge, which we may have trying to control this particular urge. Everybody's been assigned to a group. How much time do we have? How much time do they have, Maharaj? Three minutes. Three minutes.
Is everyone clear what you have to do? Right? We want to hear your particular strategy for dealing with this, the, the, this challenge, you know? For the managers, the urge to speak. How are you going, what is your strategy for controlling, regulating this urge to speak? And for the man, what is your strategy for dealing with the bodily demands or the anger or the mind? Is it clear, everyone, what you have to do? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Oh, are you there? I'm here. Oh, good. Oh, good. I couldn't hear anybody. Yes, yeah, sorry. That's because what happens is they, that sometimes they will put their raise their hand and ask me to join their breakout room because they need help. <laughs> so then I disappear off the screen for a minute while I hop in and out of a room. <laughs> it gets very exciting. Here we go. I've got a call coming in from Jun Marshmi Prabhu now. Who's got a question? Hare Krishna Janmashmi Prabhu. Okay, so um, you you have got a group exercise. Um, think about the urges of the body, the mind's demands, and the actions of anger. They should take um, o only one of them. One of these. Yes. Basically, pick one. Yes, yeah. So why don't you just pick, like, say, for instance, the mind's demands, and I'll make sure the others are looking at the urges of the body and the actions of anger. Yeah? All right. Okay. All right, then. Hurry go. Hurry go. There we go. I'm just going to jump into the other. Look, I've got another one coming in here, Maharaj. So. <laughs> I'm just going to let group um, two, group two, know to deal with the urges of the body. That's it. I'm just going to go to the breakout room, so I might disappear for a minute. Okay. So each men's group know which one they're doing, do they?
Haribo? Haribo, Maraj. Maybe if we can give them a few more minutes um, so that they've got a little bit more time because they're in bigger groups. Groups take a little bit of time to kind of settle in the first time round. Okay. Um, that would be good. And then what happens is we usually send them a message out which tells them they have one minute and then it counts down. So they've got to be <laughs> It's quite difficult to do online, but it, it can work. Okay. We did a lot of this. We did a lot of this when we did Sri Shopanishad and it, it worked very nicely. Oh really? What did you yeah. do? What did you do with Ishopanishad? Yeah. All, all sorts of different exercises about how we could tap, tackle different things in our spiritual life, how we could um, overcome um, Mayavad philosophies. Um, <laughs> so they had to do a skit to, skit that presented that, or present a script that you know they could um, how they could overcome uh, a Mayavadi who came and approached them in the street, for instance. Um, all sorts of things like that we did. Um, they even got to do a presentation for the prayers of the Sri Shabanishad. So they got to actually present the class, present that topic, that one particular mantra to the rest of the class, and then invite the other members to participate in their discussion. So that was also fun. Wow. Well, you, you had them do the class. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's an interesting way to see how much people are actually reading and understanding, um, mm. you know, and also to see if actually we're going to focus on the main points that Srila Prabhupada covers in his purports. Um, because, of course, that's the important aspect of this, is, you know, is to understand, you know, what is Srila Prabhupada presenting in his purports and what do we understand from them? Um, you know, and how can we then present that? in normal everyday language to somebody else. How can we how can we talk about it confidently and reach? Um, and of course application. You know, personal application, yeah. teaching application. Mm. Uh, we did we did a lot of stuff like that. <clears throat> oh, okay. You kept them all busy, yeah? Yeah, well it's difficult. This online thing is difficult because you can't always see whether people are sleeping at the other end, or going off and doing something else. <laughs> you know, um, so it's really important to keep everybody's attention. Um, and part of that process for me just, I mean, what happened for me was I taught Unit 1, Bhagavad Gita, and I was doing a straight lecture, and it just didn't work very well. You know, um, it was boring. Oh, yeah. So in the Isha Upanishad, I decided to be a bit more inventive, you know, and try and come up with some new ideas about stuff that we could try online. And I think it worked. Okay, good. Okay, so they should be about ready now. We have to push on. Move on. Okay, all right. So I'm going to send a message out. Message. So it's it's now sent out a countdown. So it's counting down in their rooms from 60 seconds. It's on 50 seconds, and then it will just cut them off, and they have to come back in. So now they're under pressure. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Oh, you put everybody into a room, huh? You've got four rooms yeah. here. Four rooms, yeah, four different rooms. They can't hear us. <laughs> okay. Are they going to come out of their room after the they one minute? 20, yeah, in about 20 seconds or so, they should all start coming out. <laughs> Hare Krishna, who is this? Our discussion was remaining, we could not discuss. Uh, we were 10 okay. to 20%. We need well, more did time. You, okay, did you get any points though, down? No, but we are just discussing and then we got cut out. Okay, all right, okay, no problem. Like everybody's coming back in now anyway. Let's see what happens. 
<laughs> and Marshall will be probably looking very confident there. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we got it all figured out. <laughs> okay, they got it all figured out. John Marshall probably was okay. And I think Moody Tree Marshall looks quite confident over there as well. <laughs> Okay. okay, I think we're all back in the room now. Okay, who would like to go first? Sundar Geshe bro. What, what is your urge? Actions of anger, Maharaj. Actions of anger, okay. This is the uh, I have a little bit went through, went to have an experience, personal experience, just now I'm saying. So maybe wrong also. Please slowly so that we so that it's clear over the over the line. Okay, Prabhu. So once one time just I was traveling the train. So actually, I uh, at that time I was in a simple dress in a pant shirt. <laughs> so that day actually I was uh, traveling in a normal general bogey. So that day I got not any uh, get any seat just to sitting. So what I did, I jumped on the upper upper seat. So I set it there, uh, so I was two person. So at that in the meantime, when another person he came, and he called me. Oh man, just uh, you know, go uh, go aside, I want to sit at that, sit there. So they, they were two person, so they pushed me uh, to keep aside, so like uh, luggage, and they want to sit there. So actually, I request them. No, you can sit another another areas because it will be very difficult to sit us. So they pushed me. So I become a little bit angry, and I tell them, "What you will do if I not will be you know I keep our luggage or I will not be here or there? So what you will do?" So they push me, and they. At the meantime, they become so angry. So I become also angry. And so both person becomes angry and they uh, pull me and they pull me to you know, just uh, to sketching me and out of the seat. So at that time, I was so angry. So actually, at that time, I was with our mom. So our mom become very angry of them. But, uh, at the last, my mother was you know, very affectionate towards us. So he take us uh, very uh, loving, lovingly, and she taught them, "You cannot do anything if you want to do. So you can do me like me, my mother." So at that time, I was angry, but after some times, I think, "Oh, uh, what uh, what mistake I have been committed." my mother was so in a very serious way and that she was very in anxiety. So after some times, because I was reading Bhagavad Gita at that time, I was a new commercial expert. So after some times, when the person set out their another seat, so I tell them some story from Bhagavad Gita. So they, that person becomes so nervous and they become so polite and they asked me, who are you person actually? And what one do you tell me? Actually, you are you have not committed any mistake. Actually, I have been committed mistake. So up later they become no looks like a surrender to me and my mothers. So uh, my point is this: first I was angry, but little bit after sometimes I becomes uh, little uh, less anger means uh, I become little polite. So uh, later they become surrender. So this one, a supposing example, I mean to a positive example, 
But and other time, just I was traveling in another <laughs> train. So that times actually I was, I was uh, traveling in a you know, second class seat. So I was eating Rajabhok Prashad. So in that time, this is Kathal. What, what told Kathal to? Jackfruit. Jackfruit, okay. So actually Jackfruit was looking, it looks like a meat. No, so one person came and approached me. Oh, person, you are wearing dhoti kurta and put in this tulak and toshi mala so and so. But what are you, what are you eating? I'll spill it. So I told them, this is a fruit, jack fruit, and this is actually rajbo. So you are eating rajbo. But that person, he doesn't believe me. He thinks, oh, I'm eating actually some meat. So he called so many person, oh, what this sadhu is doing? So all this person, they uh, told them, he's actually eating rajbo and it's a fruit. It's not a meat. But he doesn't believe on that. So in the meantime, actually, in the train, there was a uh, chicken biryani seller. Chicken biryani, so meat biryani. So he purchased one biryani and he sat very near and very close to me. And uh, he started to eat that chicken biryani. So I was a little bit angry. At the same time, I was, you know, I cannot do anything also because I am not the owner of the seat. So I become uh, angry to him. And, and this way, actually, he wanted to you know, uh, make a quarrel. So meantime, actually, left, I left that bogies and I left that seat, and I go to another man's seat, and he came there. So this is a negative example. I faced in uh, two types of condition in a different, different manner. So sorry for that. Okay, so that was how you countered the anger. You left the place. You went away, huh? So your strategy for dealing with anger was to go away from the person who was encouraged, inciting your anger. From the Kesha? I think we lost him there. Okay, we have to move on. Someone else? Let's try another group. Maybe group two? Should be a little shorter. That presentation was a little too long. Jim Marsh, we put up? I, I think Aniruda probably should give uh, our presentation. Okay, um, whoever. Which, what's the urge? That's um, the urges of the mind. Okay, go ahead. Aniruddha Prabhu, you are there? Prabhu, oh, just a second, can you speak through my mic? <laughs> yes, yes, he is ready, probably. Yes. Hare Krishna, I'm, I'm sorry for my, my, my Zoom stopped working. So I urge is to speak uh, about mind, about, about the urge of mind. So uh, there are a lot of experiences that uh, we all could share about mind. And uh, the battle with the mind is constant. Every morning we have this battle with the mind. Uh, in fact, uh, because I've got deities at my place and I have to do Mangal Arti, uh, and I'm the Puchari, so I have to wake up every day by three o'clock. Uh, you know, mind says no, the heart says go. So that's there. So uh, I'm going to focus, uh, take less time and focus on what we could do to uh, stop this urge or control this urge of mind. The first would be disciplining ourselves. So uh, what we do, uh, what are uh, the standards in ISKCON is we wake up early and we take prasad, uh, you know, before sleep, going to bed, uh, we take prasad at least two to three hours to that end. The, uh, the, the third prasad of the day is very light. We finish our chanting before the Guru Puja. 
and uh, lecture of scriptures. And the most important discipline is following the four regulative principles very strictly. Uh, other than this, the second point, uh, you, you know, these Mayavadis we discussed, they try, they try to cre create blank in the mind. They try to, they want to cre uh, create a, a null, you know, a void space in the mind, in the, and that's how they want to control. But Prabhupada this, uh, opposes this, and it does not even work. So the, our approach should be param drishta nirvartante. We should be engaged in a higher taste. Uh, once we get that higher taste, uh, we'll be automatically motivated and we can control. So we uh, we can engage ourselves in chanting, kirtan, uh, daily reading scriptures, uh, engage in daily worship, uh, devotee association, sankirtan, and most important, our service uh, given to us by our authorities. So that's how uh, I believe uh, we can control the urge of mind. Okay, uh, but. You know, hearing, chanting, these things we do every day, is it, is it, are we going to get a higher taste? Is it, you know, what can help us to get a higher taste? Because sometimes, you know, we may not have much taste for hearing and chanting. We think, well, I do this all the time, you know? Uh, Maharaj, in my opinion, uh, we, we could associate more with uh, devotees will hear their realizations. Uh, you know, we'll come to know how. You know, they, they've been to our shoes at some point of time, especially in senior devotees. So they can tell w uh, what worked out best. And if we go to a secluded place and try to uh, hear from radio or uh, or recorded lectures and read, uh, you know, that's going to help for sure. Uh, but that's just one part of the point. Uh, I think more important would be to be associate uh, to get into association of devotees and seek guidance under a bona fide spiritual master. Maybe have somebody come and live with you, who's really good in sadhana. Yes, sir. Uh, in that, uh, I'm lucky because I'm I'm staying with my Siksha Guru. <laughs> oh, really? Well, you're very lucky. Yeah. Yes. So then there's no difficulty to wake up early, you're not going to sleep more, you're going to be quite strict in waking up. Yes, uh, you know, uh, yad yad acharati shreshtra. So when, when I see him, I get the motivation to do things. Okay. And you have deities as well, you have some regular program for their worship. Yes, I, I, I want to share the first time. Okay, these are my babies, you see? Oh yeah, wow. <laughs> so, God, Radha, Sham, Sundar. Can I see? Where are they? Everyone, little... On his um, profile. Oh, Can you see them now, where he's speaking? Oh, Which, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. Flower bottles also, huh? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so th these are good things to help us control the mind. Have some good engagement in Krishna's service. All right, we'll go ahead. We have a, one, one more, the men, a final men's group about the demands of the body. You have Janmashmi Prabhu and Amritesh Krishna Prabhu who wanted to say something. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, Janmashmi Prabhu. Um, we were in the um, same group as um, Aniruddha Prabhu. Um, what the, the what we all kind of felt was the, the highest priority um, deserved to be given to um, chanting our japa. So you know, if we chant in the association of devotees who are very dedicated to their japa, they're um, caring attentively, they're very enthusiastic, and uh, that will strengthen our own practice. 
if we start our day on a good footing, a strong um, japa, hearing every mantra, then it will be so much easier to control the mind. Do you, do you chant the japa together? Or in, do you chant one person in one room? So chant in one person. One person in one room? Yeah. Do you, uh, do you chant oh. privately or you chant your japa all together? All of you in one well, room? Good. I, I personally think that it's good to be chanting with others. Of course, we don't have a lot of choices during the lockdown. But um, <laughs> at any rate, generally it's good to find someone. And this is what Bhaktivinoda Thakur recommends in Harinam Chintamani. That um, we chant with someone who... has more faith in the holy name and is more advanced in chanting and then automatically we will become more attentive and more enthusiastic we'll just we'll take in that uh, that uh, devotional energy that's coming from a more advanced devotee bhakti chaitanya swami was telling how he's chanting japa every morning with several hundred people that he chants so like from 5 15 to 7 every morning and he's got about, you know, several hundred people online and he sits in front of the video and they, and they all chant together. Do you think that would help? Yeah, I mean, it's good to do that. You know, it's a recommendation of Vaitin uh, Notak Corp, for sure. And um, so if we take that up, you know, we won't be the losers. I mean, I've found that my best job is usually when I'm in Sangha. <clears throat> You know, in a situation of a lockdown where we're kind of forced to be by ourselves a lot, and, um, and we have to push really hard, you know, to hear every mantra, give our hearts to it. But that's in general, you know, for having trouble with mental control. The we, first thing we look at, well, how's my job? Do I need to improve in that? And then, um, and we have to have, you know, the the biggest challenge is the pramada, you know, in attent in attention. Pramada is also defined as madness, <laughs> yeah. and uh, the, the, um, the cure for that, according to Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur, is enthusiasm. So if we, if we have the utsaha, if we really give ourselves to it tremendously, understanding this is the most important activity in my life. Okay, good. Life, put it as the highest priority, which means we begin the night before, we don't eat a huge meal, and we got adequate rest, and then we're just, we just pop out of bed and get into it. You know, get into it as, you know, in a very intense and loving, enthusiastic mood. You know, one thing about this eating thing, you know, when I joined the movement, I was always told, we don't eat any grains after four in the afternoon. Prabhupada had, inst had instructed all the devotees, no grains after four in the afternoon. And, you know, it's very similar to Buddhas, you know, uh, because I preach in countries in Asia where there's Buddhism, and the Buddhists, they have this kind of rule, you know, they don't eat after, they only eat two meals. They eat in the morning, they eat at lunchtime, they won't eat at all in the evening. And this is a, it's a very good way for health. If one can be more regulated about this, uh, try not to eat much at night. Yeah, you know, I used to have a rule on my traveling sankirtan parties, not one banana after 4 p.m. And, uh, you know, we just put a huge emphasis on japa, and we did really big. You know, the parties were very successful in that way. But it came from the strong japa, and then there was good cooperation and a happy mood because the japa was strong. You, you said so that's, that's, not one banana or only one banana, is it? Not one banana. After, Not even a banana. After four. So in other words, the last thing you could eat would be four. We could have milk. Oh, yes. Yeah. Glass of hot milk. Not, yeah. not any, any salad food. No salad. And when you're in trouble, it's like that you don't have many choices, you know. So, right. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. So controlling right. the mind. So the tongue has a lot to do with it then. To help of course, us. It begins with that. Yeah, the, the chanting and the, um, also the prasadam. Mm -hmm. Bhaktivinoda Thakur also talks about chanting in front of the deities to be very beneficial. So somebody has deities, yeah, and chant that's true. in front of yeah. the deities. Okay, we, heart. Are, are, can we go ahead to the final group now, Krishna Keshava? Yes, yeah, sure. So, Krishna Keshava, 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 Krishna Ke
So that's the mother G system, the final group. Did we do the bodily demands? Yeah. No, no, we didn't. No, then we have. We got, two, we got two groups left. Yeah, the marriages yeah, and one one ma one male group and one female group, right? Okay. Then we take group three, which is the next male group, and then the mother last. Okay. Okay. Group three. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Maharaj Ji. Hare Krishna. Yeah, so Prabhuji, we have this urge of body, uh, which uh, basically comprise of three elements, that is tongue, belly and genitals. So, uh, can we cover all three? Like, is there sufficient time Prabhuji? How, how much time we have to speak? Like two, three minutes? Well, they're related. It's all connected. Okay. Uh, so Prabhuji, uh, so Hare Krishna Maharaj. So, uh, I would just like to recite a small incident which happened with me only. So I understood how we need to control it. So it happened when I was very new to Krishna consciousness and I was living in outside uh, sort of rent on the rent basis, PG sort of thing I was living. So because there was no such facility of base in that city where I was connected. So because I was living outside, so I had no opportunity or no facility to get prasadam over there. So I was eating a normal stuff outside in a restaurant. But at the same time, uh, I was connected to temple and was practicing also. So because uh, we see in the North India, condition is little bit more like degrading. So and this is very common, especially in the college areas. So because I was college in that time, so in that PG, it was like completely free. No restriction was there. And all the students and professionals were living over there. So uh, in the starting, things were normal. But as the time passed, I observed that uh, sorry to say that, but, but all the four regulative principles were being broken in that PG every day, day in and day out. So it started creating trouble for me. And because I was not taking prasadam also, so my mind was also not very much controlled at that time so that I can digest and I can just uh, go over with anything and everything which I see or observe. So it started creating problems. So I just uh, discussed it with uh, one of the temple devotees, especially my counselor, I discussed this. So he told me, he initially only he used to tell me that you should leave that place. Because if you see the breaking of this fourth principle, which is related to our genitals, and of course I was not taking prasadam also. And as Maharajji said that it is all interconnected, all three. And it is, of course. So there, but due to, because I was not having that much courage or you can say inspiration and conviction, I was not leaving that place because of some comfort zone and all that. But uh, finally what happened, one day, as they say, the Guru needs to be strict and heavy. So one day my counselor told me, either you leave that place or after some time, you will, be, you will become an instrument for their enjoyment. And you will be enjoying with them. So it's better you should leave today only that place. And that one statement of my counselor, it, it hit me hard. And I realized that I have to leave anyhow. So that day itself, some devotee helped me to find out some new places and I left that place. And what I found to be more, more surprising when I left that place, after that I grew much more than what I could do in two, three years over that place. So I realized that the best strategy or the best way to handle these three is to move away from the association of those people who are doing these three, as I experienced what my little experience says. So this is what a practical strategy we see and just one more incident I would like to quote, but not my personal, what we hear in scorn from devotees. So there was a, uh, there was a devotee who went to Vrindavan, um, it, 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 it's a, like a foreigner devotee. So he came to Vrindavan temple and he got the opportunity to honor uh, halwa made up of pineapple. And we all know this pineapple halwa is very tasty. So he's, he started honoring it and he liked it very much. So he was taking, taking, taking and uh, it is related to belly. So he was taking, taking and the devotee who was serving, he said that Prabhu, you can take it to your room and you can uh, have it to the best of your satisfaction. And he did that. So what happened, unfortunately, he took it like at a devotee's merit this, that somehow the, it was a tragedy and it's, it created a problem in his stomach and finally he he needs the operation and something like like that happened and then they have to operate doctors have to operate to make the things proper to take out all the halva and all that it means it was a medical problem which occurred 
So from these incidents, we can inspire ourselves that yes, these three things need to be controlled. Otherwise, results can be drastic. The result can be either we can move away from bhakti or at the physical level also, we can create problem for ourselves. So this is uh, our uh, the simple understanding from our group. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. So your solution was, one way was to move away. Association, of course, very important. And in the first case, uh, the second case, the second example you give, you, well, you give the example of uh, this attachment to eating, overeating, how it brought so much health problems, serious health problems. So we'll speak more about that tomorrow. Okay, we'll go ahead, Madhijis. Are you ready? You can present your uh, solution to dealing with the urge to speak. Madhijis? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Can you hear me? Yes. It's cutting. Yes. All no. right. Go ahead. No, yes. no, we cannot hear. Can't hear you, Mataji. You're breaking up. Um, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Shraddha Mataji. Please go ahead. Prabhu, am I audible? You're audible, yes. So, um, actually, we had just uh, made a small skit which was based on uh, uh, ways to um, ways to deal with situation. But since Mataji is not able to speak, so we will just share a personal experience. Um, I remember I was very new in the temple, and there was a Mataji there was many Mataji who used to serve. Yeah. And uh, one of the Matajis, uh, she was very uh, she was very open and she used to speak a lot. And then um, we also used to speak a lot with them. And then uh, after some time, uh, people realized that uh, she, she used to speak, uh, I mean, she's a very good person, but unfortunately by the conditioning, she used to speak uh, things that were not relevant. But then uh, sadly, everybody knew and everybody was very, being very protective of themselves and preventing oneself from being such alpha and offended. And then um, somehow everybody knew that they're not supposed to associate with her. And then people started ignoring, applying their own own ways of solving this particular situation. But unfortunately, I happened to come to Mayapur and along with me, this Mataji also came to Mayapur. And this is like this recent thing. And then they said to me, don't talk with her, don't, uh, don't, don't associate with her. But it is next to impossible in this lockdown, we meet uh, each other on the road, across the street, we meet, we meet and it is impossible to ignore. And in fact, she's very senior to me and it is impossible to ignore. And somehow, um, I had to meet her. And then whenever I had to meet her, again, the whole process of talking goes on and on. I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm listening. And then in this little attempt, because I don't have that much amount of knowledge, somehow I got this idea that um, I think it's because human cannot, man cannot but speak, man cannot but associate, we cannot ignore. So somewhere I thought maybe I should uh, request her to um, say some pastimes of uh, Krishna and speak about some pastimes of Krishna in that mode. And then it worked. And uh, sometimes if that didn't work, then I would say, you know, some pastimes of her spiritual master. So in that way, she would keep on glorifying her spiritual master. Therefore, in that way, we would uh, prevent ourselves from some kind of prajal pass. On a little small experience that I had. And Lee Krishna. Okay. So, your, so what was your strategy then in dealing with her? Was to speak about Krishna, right? To speak some yes, past, my... to speak some pastime of Krishna. Okay, very nice. That's a very nice strategy. Yeah, uh, we have the example. There was this. There was this. There was this one. Uh, 
Vaishnava uh, Vamsi Das Babaji Vamsi Das Babaji when people would speak something about the government he would say Govardhan <laughs> you know people would be speaking politics but he would just speak about Krishna Govardhan and so like that yeah you can, if we're expert enough people may speak something we can say yeah, oh, really? Do you know that Leela in Krishna's pastime? There's a pastime like that in Krishna Leela, isn't there, you know? And yet you bring up some pastime and it may have nothing to do with what they're talking about. But you can just speak about Krishna. So very nice. That's a very nice strategy. Yeah, if we can bring in Krishna consciousness. Let's have a look at some of these other exercises. Uh, well, first of all, the first question. What about this one, about the, the rennet in the cheese? How do you react? Is it, has this happened to you? It may have happened to us many times, right? You go to a function and they give you some, you know, some pizza or something with cheese on it. Then you find out later that it's got animal rennet in the cheese. So how do you react? What do you say? Oh, it doesn't matter. You know, everybody eats it anyway. <laughs> Is that your attitude? What do you do? Then Mashri Prabhu has his hand raised, Maharaj. Yeah? Mashri Prabhu, please go ahead. <clears throat> You're muted, that's it. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I mean, you can't really do much after the fact, other than you don't get angry about it, but you're just a lot more careful the next time. Right. You inquire more specifically, find out who did the cooking, and uh, ask, ask was, is this a rennet, animal rennet free cheese, the things like that, that's, that's kind of, I mean, what else can you do? And um, I don't think it's time to get angry, you're at a public function, so you definitely don't want to freak out on everybody, that's not going to do any good. But um, just in general, Probably 90% of the cheese that's out there is, is not, it's got animal rennet in it. At least in the West, that's the way it is. Yeah. So you got to be really careful. It's more expensive to buy um, animal rennet free cheese. So mostly you can expect it to have to be not vegetarian. You know, just have to be expert in interfacing with the world. And sometimes we grow by uh, learning from our mistakes. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. Yeah, and there was some function. I was reading Prabhupada Leela, and the devotees all went with Prabhupada. They went to one Indian family's home, and they were given food, and the devotee was eating it, and the devotee was saying, Prabhupada, this sabji's got onions in it. And Prabhupada just said, there's no onion in it. And the, devo the devotee said, Prabhupada, really, Prabhupada, this has got onions in it. Prabhupada, there's no onion in it, eat it. <laughs> you know, Prabhupada didn't want to offend the, the family, you know, because the man had done a lot of service, he contributed a lot of service, valuable service. And so he had the devotees eat it, even though it had onions in it. But Prabhupada himself didn't eat it. <laughs> he had the yeah, there's, there's, different, there's different examples like that. When Sari Kesh at that time Swami was traveling with Prabhupada as his secretary and uh, Prabhupada wanted him to go to, the, to, to um, Russia to preach. And Hari Kesh really wanted to stay with Prabhupada and then, but Prabhupada persisted and, um, and then Hari Kesh came up with a strategy but Prabhupada all they have over there is meat and potatoes and then Prabhupada this may sound a little strange, he said, but, well, eat meat then, but preach. So <laughs> he really, um, you know, put a high emphasis on doing the service. And then yeah. there's another example with Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, when he was cultivating the British, because he was spreading Krishna consciousness like wildfire, building temples here and there all over India. And he, he invited some uh, British um, leaders, governmental leaders, I think it was right here in, in um, Mayapur. And he hired um, some hotel cooks to cook them some um, meat preparations. 
so that they would feel comfortable with that. So, you know, these are time, place, and circumstance adjustments, and we may not do that. But for the most part, we should be careful about what we eat. But these are some examples of the kind of prioritization that our acharyas gave to spreading Krishna consciousness, and uh, you know, sometimes taking some major risks. But not that we do take advantage of that type of thing. But if there's some mistake like that, then you know, just move on, yes. just move ahead. Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah. There's also one quote, Prabhupada saying he's talking. He said that. The one yogi was in the desert and he was starving, there was nothing to eat, so he killed a dog and ate the dog. But Prabhupada said, personally, he said, I would rather starve. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was Vishwamita Muni who, okay. who ate the dog and, and it's called, I think it's Apadharma. In time of emergency, then you can tra you know, transgress made a conjunction. Okay. Uh, it's in the Bhagavatam. It's in a prep word. Oh, really? Wow. Okay, thank you. Maharaj, <laughs> yes? you have Angritesh Krishna Prabhu and Aniruddha Prabhu waiting to say something as well. Okay. Angritesh Krishna? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhanad Guna. Maharaj, regarding these uh, exceptional cases, uh, when, uh, if you uh, if you analyze this, all these situations are uh, very specific situation which is where there is no facilities are in place. But right now in uh, we have Iskon temples all over the places. We have devotees all over the places, and there is absolutely no scope to transgress any of these uh, rules. And if at all we transgress by chance, like as it is mentioned in this task. We must atone personally by chanting extra rounds, taking up some austerity, and uh, resolving that we should uh, not be. Um, we should be careful next time. Yes, but we had that from Jan Master, uh, from another speaker. They mentioned how we should be careful in the future. Certainly, so I think Jan Master may Prabhu said that. But I appreciate your point that we could do some atonement. We should certainly. Re feel very much regret in our own mind that uh, we're so controlled by our tongue that we didn't take care to find out is this cheese actually without rennet. Because as Jin Mastami said, 90%, you know, a lot, most of the cheese on the market today has rennet in it. And if you go to some function and they have cheese, very likely it's got rennet in it. One should be very careful about eating these kind of things. So, yeah, we should be very cautious and, and f certainly in future take more care what you eat and find out properly what is it, what's the qu what kind of cheese is it. Okay, so Mata, one more. Mata, Mata, like to say something, Megan Mataji maybe? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Um, Maharaj, sorry. Um, so I wanted to ask about this question because I was under the impression that we shouldn't accept uh, anything that's not prasadam. So if we went to a public conference, then would that be a different case out of um, social reasons that we could uh, take something that's not Well, it depends what kind of public function you're at. It may be one of it may be a function organized by devotees. You don't know. I mean devotees also make these kind of mistakes. And if you go to a devotee function, then you know they will expect that you also honor some of the something of the prasada. It, it's it's quite difficult sometimes when you go to a function and you do, if you refuse to eat, the pe people sometimes feel very offended that you're not able to take any, that you won't take anything. So you, yeah, you have to be a little cautious about how you do this. Yeah, you're right. Generally, we don't like to eat outside, but you know, 
sometimes you have to make that clear to people before you go to the function. That, all right, I'll come to your function, but don't expect me to eat anything. You know, you can tell them, I, I don't eat at night, or I don't eat out. That's good, quite justified. I don't have the habit of eating out. I only eat food in our own temp, in our own center. I only eat food I cook myself. You just have to explain like that. But, you know, sometimes, you know, maybe other people, relatives or friends are there, and they're, you know, taking, they, they want you to, you want to be with them, you want to socialize with them. So sometimes even you take the food in your hand and you hold it plate and we don't eat anything. You can do like that. You can you just have something, a plate in front of you, but you don't eat it. You just put it down and leave it, you know. Different ways of dealing with, with these things. It often comes up. People, you know, you, maybe you're the only devotee in your family and you have a function. Can be difficult. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, okay, we have some more exercises here. What about, have we got time? What's the time, Krishna Keshava Prabhu? 1 15 p.m. now. Okay, we've got 15 minutes. Let's go through this. Let's see what we can do. First question. When is it all right to eat in the homes of life members who invite us? Someone would like to take this question? Somebody who hasn't spoken much? Any Ruda? Okay, uh, so Maharaj, uh, when uh, they are offering uh, uh, any service, I, I mean, now, I've been personally in a situation that I've, I've gone to houses of fat businessmen uh, and they, they are vegetarian but they're non devotee right? And until and unless we uh, honor something from their house, they, they don't feel because they've got this uh, ego or, or, or like love whatsoever we can call it, but they want us to have something. So we see at time, place, circumstances and as Janmashmi Prabhu said that uh, you know, even if one had to meet, so uh, that's an expression. Though it, uh, uh, I know it's not literally we have to uh, take meat, but uh, for a devotee, anything which is unoffered is meat equivalent to meat. So, uh, so in my opinion, if uh, uh, we, you know, what devotee can take uh, from life member, if that's uh, it's in a mo they, you know, they're gonna render some service or they're going to progress. I mean, especially in matters of preaching, I mean, if you are building a congregation and uh, and all of them are neophyte devotees, they don't know how to offer. And they won't even have tutsi. I mean, even if they know how to offer, they won't. So, uh, yeah, if they, if that's going to connect them to Krishna somehow, so I think that that, that can be done. But at a, at a very less uh, quantity, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, somebody can add something into this? You've got Janmashmi Prabhu and Amritesh Krishna Prabhu waiting. Or oh, Asad Prabhu hasn't spoken yet. Asad, ah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Asad Prabhu? Yes, Hare Krishna. Uh, I don't have experience with that, but um, my thought would be that, my thoughts would be that if there is a... Um, some closer relationship with uh, this life member. In that case, I believe it would be more more uh, easy um, to specify that um, that we have some. I have some specific um, eating habits, or even I could ask them to offer. Or even I could ask them if they want to know how to offer the food. So what, what I meant to say is that if there is a closer relationship with that life member. Okay. Yeah, we go to someone's home, we can say, I can offer it for you, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Let me do the offering. <laughs> yeah. That's one way around it. If, if you, you know, if you really feel you have to eat, you're going to eat. 
they really want you to eat. So you say, I'll do the offering. Let me do an offering for you. And you show them how to offer. You probably may, they may not even have an altar. You have to make the altar. <laughs> but that's our fault, that we haven't trained them. We haven't trained them how to offer. We haven't trained them how to put an altar and how, to, and how they should have Tulsi. Life members, they should be given these kind of teachings, especially if they're bringing us to, our, to their home. We should explain to them. So, <laughs> yeah. it's preaching. So, second question. How important is it not to eat food cooked by karmis? You have Ashutosh Prabhu. Yes, Ashutosh Prabhu. Hare, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dharma Pranam. Maharaj, it's very important because if we take food from karmis, it affects our consciousness in a very negative manner. And if we, if we generally take food from the karmis, gradually we'll lose taste for devotional service. Yes, you're right. We take the karma, right? <laughs> yes, sir. So what, what can we take from a karmi if you go to their home? Is there any food you can take? So as you said, Maharaj, we can, uh, we can ask, we can request that, that we can offer and then we can both partake the prasadam together. No, I don't think so. They're meat eaters. You're going to eat their, their food they've cooked? Not a very good idea. All karmis are not meat eaters, Maharaj. All karmis are not meat eaters. Okay, then, okay, they're, they're not meat eaters, they're vegetarians, but s still, be cautious. As Mataji is saying, we can take fruits. Yes, right, uncut fruit, that's the thing. Prabhupada said, you just take uncut fruit, because if you take any grains cooked by karmis, not what to speak, just take any grains, you get their karma. So generally they like to give grain, they like to give you some rice, something like that, because they, they're giving you their karma. And we should be careful. So Prabhupada said, you can give me some uncut fruit, apple, something like that. When can we eat food cooked by machines? You have only food Prabhupada. And uh, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Emmanuel. Speak. Um, the time that you can eat food that is cooked by machine. Uh, maybe during uh, emergencies where there are no produces uh, from the land, then uh, it will be cooked by machine. Example, this is another thing. Or there are no people to cook, maybe. What, what's that? I couldn't quite catch what you said, Prabhu. Can you repeat yourself, Emmanuel Prabhu? Uh, so we can eat uh, food that are cooked by machine, uh, maybe during emergencies. And uh, for example, in one instance, there might be no people to uh, cook the food, or there are no vegetables that are grown in the, uh, in the farm because uh, maybe there is drought or anything. Then during emergencies, you can eat food that are cooked by machine. Have, have any of you eaten food cooked by machines? What kind of food is it usually? It's tasteless. <laughs> it's tasteless. <laughs> well, what, what, is it, what do you mean? You have, maybe they have a, the ultraviolet something, you put, you put the food in the, you buy a, 
a packet of something, you put it in the ultraviolet, the, the, the into, into some, or into some oven or something, and it just comes out. I know, like in. It's like dead. It, like what? Uh, this food feels like dead food, like there is no life in it. Food cooked by machines. For example, maybe oh yeah, it's already cooked, but uh, with that, I'm well, we have things like noodles, which are produced by machines, you know. But the cooking, the, the, the manufacturing process, of course, used machines. But the actual cooking, cook, cooked by machine. Uh, Certainly, we encourage our, we, en we encourage cooking rather than automation. If you get everything, you know, you go to Seven Eleven. I've heard in places like Japan, the people often take three meals a day in Seven Eleven. Now, the Seven Eleven, they don't cook anything really. They just, it's all machines producing it. You know, the machine heats it up. They mix something together and put it in the machine and then give it, give it to you in a colorful bag. And so, as you said, this, you know, it's very artificial. Not, there's not going to be nutrition there, but there will be taste. The people are very controlled by taste, the taste buds. That's why they eat these kind of things. And the manufacturers are very expert to put the taste in things, to get people to eat them. They don't think about the nutrition, they just think about the taste. So finally, should we eat the meals provided on aeroplanes? Do you? Yeah, it must be Prabhu. Um, I mean, it's... Probably a little better if you take your own um, prasadam with you, but um, they have uh, Jain meals which are vegetarian. But still, it's not usually if you're traveling long distances, the jet lag increases if you eat heavily. It's better to just stay with fruit and the liquids. Um, anyway, that's that's kind of the strategy I've used over the years. You know minimize the amount that I eat on the planes and take as much as I can with me so I don't have to do that. But if, if, if that doesn't, if I don't have a facility then I just use, order a chain meal. That's supposed to be safe, but who knows what goes on in the kitchen, how much separation yeah. they've got between a non-veg and a vegetarian operations. And, um, yeah, that... I had a comment on the uh, you know, anyway, so that, that's a point. And um, and the food cooked by machines, you know, the, the it's got midday meals in Delhi and um, also in uh, Mumbai. They do huge numbers of uh, meals <clears throat> and to the poor school children. I think that's increased now with the uh, lockdown. It's all done by machine. Yeah, they get, they have a, you know it's all very automated. They've got like uh, chapati making machines that <laughs> knock out you know thousands of them because they're doing like millions of meals. I don't I can't remember the figures now, but it's just enormous. And then they do I think it was it Akshay Patra? Is that what they call it? Um, I think in, in chapati it was the midday meals. I remember that I used to visit there about ten years ago, but real competent man in charge of the whole thing and they've got all this automation to do it but then it's all offered of course um, yeah. so machine in itself isn't bad it's more the consciousness behind it you know if we buy 
junk food in the supermarket, then um, you know we're liable to get be eating some karma, you know, to satisfy our tongues. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. Yeah. So, yeah. Certainly, Prabhupada didn't like us to eat meals in the airplane, and Prabhupada traveling in the airplane, he would always bring his own tiffin. They always brought his food. I don't know how you'd. <laughs> of course, that that was in Prabhupada's time. Nowadays, it's very difficult to bring things into the airplane. They're very strict. No liquids. Yeah. Some fruit. Yeah, with a security now. Some fruits also not allowed, different things, so many rules, regulations, something, yeah. something very pungent, you can't bring it. It's very, now things have changed. But we should always try to make some alternative, as Jin Mastami said, better we bring our own dry fruit or yeah. something, something which we can, even you're going on a long journey, you have to, rather than anything which they may give you in the airline. Mm. Not going to be very satisfying. Right. Okay. So, just to overview what we covered, Upadesha Amrita. Well, I didn't give an overview of it. We'll, we'll, we'll go over it as we go through the text. We, haven't given an overview yet, but we spoke about how it came about, how Lord Chaitanya spoke this to Rupa Goswami. We discussed the purpose of Padesha Amrita and how, how it can help us to improve our attitude in Krishna consciousness. The purpose of Upadesha Amrita, to make us what? Goswami is right, to help us to get control over the mind and senses and our attitude in Krishna consciousness, our surrender to Krishna, Krishna's teachings. We've looked at the appropriate means of controlling the urges. Rupa Goswami and his mission, many people may follow Lord Krishna, they don't all accept Lord Chaitanya. And even those who follow Lord Chaitanya, not all of them are following Srila Rupa Goswami. So very important to understand the relationship there with Rupa Goswami and how he presents the teachings of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And how the Krishna consciousness movement is conducted under Srila Rupa Goswami. Srila Rupa Goswami has been given this task by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to explain the teachings of Krishna consciousness by his writings and by his personal example. A concluding quote, In all spiritual affairs one's first duty is to control his mind and senses. Unless one controls his mind and senses, one cannot make any advancement in spiritual life. Everyone in this material life is engrossed in the modes of passion and ignorance. One must promote himself to the platform of goodness, sattva gun, by following instructions of Rupa Goswami and then everything concerning how to make future progress will be revealed from the preface. And there's Rupa Goswami's Samadhi. Oh, this is the old days, of course. Nowadays it's all built over, there's big construction and everything there, the whole thing, there's this huge, huge building over the top of Rupa Goswami's Samadhi. Anyway, that's how it, looks, it used to look. Okay, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Are there any final questions? Maybe. Maharaj, you have a question yeah. from Anirudha Prabhu and Sundar Keshav Prabhu. And Keshav Shama Sundar Prabhu. I don't know, have you got time to take three questions? Oh, how's the time? It's 1.30, 1.33. Huh. Maybe, have the, are the questions written down? Are they typed up? 
don't think they are, but we can ask them to send them to you. Yeah. And maybe you can answer them tomorrow's class. Yeah, I think so. I think that's the proper okay. way to do it because I should have stopped earlier and asked for questions. Okay. okay. So, so if you could all forward me your questions to my email, I can send them tomorrow to you one email um, and then he can take them tomorrow. So you know what my email is, krishnakeshava at myboyinstitute.org. Then I can forward them tomorrow for a response in tomorrow's class. Okay. So Thank you very so we'll continue tomorrow, we'll take these questions first and any other questions you may have, please formulate them, have them ready tomorrow and we'll take the questions first on what we've covered today and then we will go on to text number two tomorrow. Okay, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Jai. 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 Jai.